All right, guys, here's what's on the bench today. This is a Schechter's classic. Beautiful guitar. This one's kind of dirty. Uh, it's kind of a shame that uh, somebody let it get this dirty, but this is a customer's restring guitar. And I'm not trying to put the guy down because he brought this in here to get cleaned up and restrung. So that is our job today. Let's get after it. Here we go. All right, so this beautiful guitar, the first thing we can do <clears throat> is test on the electronics. So I noticed that our output jack feels nice and tight. So we are good there. Let's turn this volume up. It's up. Three-way switch. I'd say our electronics are in good shape. Maybe just a little bit of noise in this three-way switch so I can spray some of this contact cleaner in there. And that gets rid of that real quick. But uh, these strings, I'll, I'll, I can say it. This guy was really due for a restring. Let me bring you in here close. And you can take a look at these strings. They're not supposed to be black. And uh, yeah, these babies are... So these kind of look like those black DR strings, but they're not. They should be nice and shiny and clean. So let's go ahead and pull the strings off of this one and we will throw a new set of strings on it. I have my Ernie Ball Power Peg Pro that I use all the time. I have had years of success with this string winder. Sponsor and, us, Ernie Ball. We need a sponsor. Yeah, Ernie Ball, we need a sponsor. Um, Ernie Ball strings, world's number one string, right? But these things are really good, and I do have a uh, half a dozen or so of these available down at the store. Sometimes they're a little bit loud, but I've never had a battery go dead in one. And again, I've been using them for, I'm going to say, five or six years I've used these things. And then you just plug it in right here, let it set there. Never had any issue with them. Okay, let's cut these things off. Once in a while, I see a guitar restringer, and he has and he has gloves on. I almost feel like I need my gloves on this one. It is shocking, honestly, how dirty these strings are, but. My customer might watch this video, so I don't want to be too negative on the guy. I'm going to say he has been very smart to bring this guitar in and get some new strings on it. I will say that. Okay. So first, though, got to get these old strings off of here. And unfortunately... It looks like the way that they would string stuff and they would wind it under and over and like the Gibson wrap kind of a thing. Which I highly recommend that you don't wrap your strings like that. If Sector didn't wrap their strings out of the factory like that, then I don't think you should when you get the guitar. Gibson doesn't do Gibson wraps on their strings, right? They just do the normal wrap. No companies on earth wrap their strings around like the, in the luthier knot or whatever those things are. No company that I have ever seen does very weird string wraps. And so I recommend that you don't do it either because it just makes it hard to get these things off of here. And it, it's, it makes it a real pain in the butt to get these things off of here. So sometimes, 
and then you're dealing with really rusty strings at the same time. Yeah, that sucks. Once in a while, I will watch Dave's World of Fun Stuff. And he, he's a great guy up in Canada. He restrings a lot of guitars. And uh, once in a while, he will rant. Just go off on the guys that that do this to their strings where they they uh, put the string through the tuner they wrap it around twice and then they shove it back through and all kinds of stuff like that yeah guys don't do that it is not necessary don't do that don't do that Dave's world of fun stuff he's the godfather YouTube channel of string change outs and setup videos. Yeah, I'm gonna call him the godfather of the YouTube repair videos. I think his channel has been around for 12 years, 15 years maybe. Oh, there we go. I got it. Come on now. Okay. Thought I had it. Yeah, but uh, if you're into watching this type of content, where guys are stringing up guitars on video, Dave's World of Fun Stuff. After you watch all my videos, of course. Okay, so... Let's clean on this thing a little bit. So I got a microfiber cloth. I got some new ones the other day. I'm going to move this out of the way. Should it? No, I'm going to leave that right there. Okay, what's uh, we got some Gibson. I guess I'll use some of this. Gibson guitar polish. A viewer sent this to me. It says spray on a rag. Yeah, once in a while, I feel the need to spray it directly onto the guitar. These Schecters have a very, very beautiful inlay. They are kind of busy. I will say that about them. I believe that this is the C1 Classic. Schecter makes, in my opinion, really, really nice guitars. And Schecter makes the type of guitar where you don't need to make modifications. There's a lot of guys that will buy a Firefly guitar or some sort of cheap Chinese Alibaba guitar. And they have fun. And I, 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 give, it, I give them that. It's fun to swap pickups out. It's fun to put locking tuners on them. But Schecter's come with all that fancy stuff on there right off, right off the bat. You don't need to modify your Schecter. You can, but you don't need to. They already come with good Grover tuners. They already come with good pickups. And so Schecter is that one brand that uh, they wanted to give you everything right when you bought it. They wanted to give you a really good guitar right out the door. So uh, upgrades are not necessary on them. Okay, so let's take a look here. So I always snug the tuners down. Oh, that one's pretty tight. This is my 10 millimeter open end wrench. And I just snug these babies down a little bit. Don't over tighten because I've seen times where it'll kind of crack your... Uh, the face of this so you don't want to do that it'll kind of mess it up sometimes but now we're looking at these buttons and you see this one's good oh this one this one's missing the little washer that goes under there so let me see if I have one of those one of my viewers sent me this from Amazon and it's a little package of these little nylon washers and I don't know if they are the perfect size, but that one looks pretty good. 
and we are going to see if that will work in there everything is different from each other you think oh yeah all these tuners are all the same size they all work together no they don't man they are all different from each other oh yeah that's good that worked good so I can just that one's nice and snug you don't want to over tighten these because it makes it hard to turn them but yeah one of my viewers sent me this thank you so much whoever that was I really appreciate it I have a great bunch of guys that watch my videos and sometimes they see the struggle and they help me out so I do appreciate that so next step I'm going to take my fretboard guard and a little tiny bit of I got some thousand grit sandpaper and I throw this on here just to get the shine on these frets back this guitar does have fret wear this isn't to level or recrown or anything like that. It's just to put a little bit of shine on them and to get some of that dirt off of there. And maybe a little tiny bit of rust or corrosion that may be formed on these frets over the years. And it just takes a second. Well, let's say it takes 30 seconds to go along and hit these things. And it's just an extra step that I take on a setup string change out. Uh, F1 oil, my music nomad. I use this stuff a lot. Put some on here. And then I take a paper towel. And just spread this stuff on. So you let this soak in. It really kind of darkens the wood. It cleans it. It gets a lot of that DNA off from the last guy's rusty fingers. Sweaty fingers. He's been eating chicken wings at the bar and then he plays his guitar all night and that's kind of looks like what was happening on this fingerboard and this is a beautiful fingerboard and it should be should be kept nice and clean so you just kind of let that soak in there a little bit and I don't see any fret wear up here at the 12th fret all the fret wear is down here in his open chords and especially under his A string so this guy's definitely been rocking on this thing and these are tall frets on this I would say they're medium jumbo just off the top of my head and uh, this guitar could be leveled and crowned there's still plenty of room on the frets for that okay so she shined up a little bit we've cleaned the fretboard we put a new plastic or vinyl washer underneath this tuner so it is time for strings. Go ahead and roll the string jingle. Today's string choice. Today's string choice. Ernie Boss Slinky Cobalt 11 through 52s. Oh yeah, this is a heavy metal rock and roll machine, this guitar. So he's going to do some 11s. Boy, these are... These will not rust in this packaging. These babies are airtight. 
and completely shrink wrapped in here. Slinky Cobalt. 11 through 52. Engineered to maximize output and clarity. The world's most powerful strings for over 60 years. Ernie Ball. Okay. Our low E string is a 52 gauge. That is a heavy string. Okay. Our A string is a 42 gauge. That's usually what I prefer as my low E string. But I'm kind of an older guy and I'm not really into the drop C tuning kind of stuff. But I have to admit when I listen to it, that stuff is heavy. And it's basically Motley Crue tuning. It's Motley Crue tuned a whole full step down. So their low E string was a D. And then they were just tuned to that. So it's been since 1981 where I've been listening to D tuning. And that's all this tuning is going to go. Except you drop the, the D string to the C or to the D string, right? You guys know what I'm saying. It's a word salad, but we are doing drop C tuning on this. So to sum it up, the D string tunes down to C, and then when you drop tune, the low E string goes down to C. Drop C tuning. Man, I know some kids that do drop B tuning, and I'm like, what? Drop B? That's crazy. But I can't argue, when you listen to that music that is in these low tunings, it's like, dang, man. That stuff sounds heavy. So you can't argue with these kids that are doing these low tunings. Sector Classic is just going to really tear some shit up here. Oh. These are packaged really, really well. I have to say, when you buy strings, they don't mess around. You will never get a string out of an Ernie Ball package that's rusty because their uh, packaging is airtight. Doesn't allow any moisture in, in the package. Make sure these are laying down in the saddle properly. There you go. Then finally, our high E string is an 11 gauge. Come on, baby, get in there. There it goes. <laughs> 